Hello and welcome to another photography tutorial. In this episode, we will be talking about the exposure trinity, or in other words, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. But first, let's look at where to find these on our camera. In order to manually set any of these, you're going to need a higher end camera. Pictured here is the Nikon D90. Its manual setting is the M, as it will be in most cameras. Selecting this option will allow you to have control over all three options mentioned in this tutorial. For the specifics of this, you will have to consult your owner's manual. Now, to obtain a proper exposure, you will have to understand how all these interact. To begin with, we'll focus on shutter speed. By increasing the shutter speed, which is decreasing the number, the camera shutter will be open for a less amount of time and will let less light in. So the relationship between shutter speed and exposure is, as shutter speed increases, the photo becomes darker and vice versa. Now why do we care about shutter speed? Well in addition to exposure level, it determines to what degree a moving object will appear blurry or crisp. Aperture also plays a role in the clarity of our photo, but in a different way. The aperture is a series of typically rounded blades that open or close to let in different amounts of light. The relative openness of an aperture is typically measured in f-stops, or f. This is determined by the lens. Most kit lenses typically have a minimum f-stop of 4 to 5.6 and a maximum around 20 to 22. The thing to remember about aperture that is somewhat reversed, that is, the opening of the aperture more and letting more light in decreases the number, i.e. an f2 will let in more light than an f8. The other thing the aperture determines is your depth of field, or how in focus things are at varying distance from the lens. A smaller f-stop will leave less in focus than a larger one. The final thing we're going to talk about is ISO. ISO affects your photo's graininess or noise level. The ISO number refers to how sensitive your image sensor is to light and the camera itself. A higher ISO will be sensitive to lower light levels, but the trade-off is that you'll have a noisier photo. Noise refers to the color discrepancies in a photo where a pixel has to guess what the actual color is. Noise at even higher ISOs becomes less of a problem under stronger light. A higher ISO will move your exposure up or lighter. Now that we have at least some idea of how these all relate to exposure, let's take a brief look at how they interact with each other. Okay, for our example, we're going to say that we increased our shutter speed because we really needed to free some action. As a result, our exposure is down here. What can we do to correct it? There are two options based on the information in this tutorial. We can open up the aperture more or increase the ISO. Personally, I would recommend opening up the aperture over increasing the ISO. This is a personal thing more than anything else, but I tend to be happier with lower ISO photos than um, higher ones. Okay, so why is all this important? First of all, shooting manual gives you control. It takes the luck out of it. There's no more hoping to get a good shot. It's a matter of now I know what I want here, I can do this, this, and this to achieve it. Secondly, manual shooting will allow you to better make use of your camera's features and typically yield better results than any of the presets available. And finally, it's essential for shooting under certain lighting conditions. Now some of this may sound intimidating, especially if this is the first time you've even considered shooting manual. This doesn't mean you have to jump in head first. Ease into it, start shooting P or program, then transition to aperture shutter priority mode, and finally move into manual. Also, you don't have to shoot manual all the time. There are instances where shooting in other settings will have its advantages. So I encourage you to shoot manual, but at the same time, use your discretion and not get hung up on one way to do something. Thank you for watching.